Hello, thanks for so much for tuning in today. I am Dr. Greta Anderson and today I am so excited because we're going to cover a topic that not too many people talk about kind of in public, but it's a really important one. I see it out on the lesson T, I see it out in the fairways and more importantly, I hear about it. And now I'm a doctor, but I can't fix everything, but I do believe in connecting with experts who can help us navigate the navigate the things that are going on in our lives. So simply put, I brought in an expert here. Here's my friend, Jen Fry, master coach of Jen Fry Coaching. And today, folks, we're going to break it down and talk about being the golf widow. What does that feel like? What is it? Some of you probably heard the term. Some of you probably felt the term and everything in between. So we're going to get into it. So first of all, thank you, Jen, for being here. So good to see you. Yes. Thank you so much. I love it. Such a, yes. such a great topic because I love how you introduced it. We don't really talk about it no. and it's not something only golfers experience or spouses of golfers. <laughs> I've heard it like, um, so I live in the Midwest. So okay. hunting season comes along uh, yes. and it's like, now I'm a hunting widow. So I do think you're, you're, I, I just want to offer your audience right off the top. If you're experiencing that feeling, you are not alone. Great. And there's definitely some things that we can offer to just see if we can make some shifts for you. Great point. Great point. So I guess first things first, um, that you mentioned, it, it could be golf, but it could be hunting. It could be bowling. It could be kind of anything, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But you know, I know how I'm kind of defining it, but you're more of an expert here. So how would you kind of define that feeling of widowism? If that is that a word? I just probably made it up. But if it yeah, is. no, I, I think it's accurate. And I, you know, it's different for everyone. But generally, it's that it's lonely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's lonely for the person that I that I want to be in a partnered relationship with. Mm -hmm. um, and underneath the loneliness is often feeling abandoned. Yes. feeling less than important, yes. um, feeling like something else is replacing that relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, it totally makes sense that when we have those feelings, we get a little graspy and we get a little bit like desperate, right? Because we're trying to get attention and yeah. we're trying to pull that person back into the relationship. Right. But right. if you've ever tried some of those techniques, you probably recognize it doesn't usually work, right? right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So I know that, you know, I'm in golf, obviously. And I know that one of the things that's always been a running joke, you know, I've been around golf many, many decades and, you know, like golf is the unforgiving mistress. She takes a ton of time because golf is a resource intensive sport between money, time, you know, nothing about golf is quick. And so I think it's one of those areas, again, obviously I'm a little biased being in golf that makes it particularly daunting for partners who don't partake in golf, or maybe they're, they're in it, but not into it the way their spouse is. They just don't know what to do. And golf really is kind of one of those healthy addictions, you know, in, in some instances, most instances, I hope a healthy addiction where the better you get with it, the more you doing it. And mm -hmm you know, just off the bat, you know, a round of golf is not 15 minutes, you know, it's four hours. And so between the practice, the play, the travel, um, you know, that's one of the things that I hear about so much, um, many people struggling with what to do, how to engage or reattach to those partners who are getting more and more and more and more and more into golf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first thing I would offer is just recognizing that golf in and of itself isn't the problem, right? right? And right. the partner isn't actually the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is that when we're thinking, mm -hmm. he doesn't love me, he'd rather be with his golf clubs, it's taking too much time, right? Those are the things that really cause that feeling of like sad or lonely or abandoned. Mm -hmm. So we really want to check in with ourselves and get super clear on like, what is the problem? So I would start with asking, like, what exactly is too much golf? What is a, a reasonable amount of, of golf? And that's going to look different. Different stages, different phases, different couples are going to have a different uh, definition of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. But that can at least serve as a starting point. Okay. Right. And then we can ask ourselves some questions like, like, how do I know that I that I'm spending that time in connection? How do I know that when he's not golfing, we're going to be together? 
and we're going to enjoy each other's company because it's probably not going to come from this graspy energy of like, I'm being abandoned, take me with you right. or super naggy right. or complaining, mm -hmm. right? Because that's coming from this place of, um, of like lack and just try, trying to like get, get the attention. So we want to be super clear on our own brains and where we're coming from first. Right. Because so if I'm hearing you and, and please do correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, that coming from that place of graspiness, as you described it, can in many ways drive the partner further toward something else, perhaps it's golf or, or something else, but that's kind yeah. of what I hear you saying. Yeah. I mean, and think, right. Like think about it. If the, if the reverse was true, if we were out doing something that we loved and we come home and the first thing that the person says to us is, where have you been? What's going on? What are you doing? It would be like, Whoa, right. This let, is hold on like, to this, yeah. let me, let me just try again. Right. So, okay. and, and I'm not suggesting that you have to accept right? That they get, that the partner gets to decide all the things mm -hmm. like, well, I mm -hmm. want to golf all the time every day, right? We have to be able to be in sure. partnership with the right. person, yes, but really. it starts with being really clear on the ask, right? Mm -hmm. Like what exactly do I want? Because yeah. it could be, I just, I want dinner home once a week, or I want to go out to brunch once a month or right. Whatever that ask is, we want to be super clear about it. Sure. And we can come from that place of knowing like, think about if you've ever been in a conversation with someone uh -huh. and it's felt like you don't really know exactly where they're going or you don't really know exactly what they want. Sure. Sure. Most people want to make their partners happy. Most people right. want to solve that problem for their partner. Right. Right. But if we don't even know what's going to make us happy, we don't even know what we that want. It's very difficult for the other person to fulfill that need and, mm -hmm. and bridge that gap. So that's always where we want to start is what do I want? Where How do I define enough? How do I define too much? Right. And then going into that um, and, and with some measure of comfort and confidence and having that conversation and that dialogue with my partner. Hey, yeah. OK, I love it. OK, you're going to be with your buddies playing 18 every Saturday or whatever the case may be. Can we make a date for Sunday brunch? Yes. Or Wednesday dinner, as you suggested, or whatever the case may be to right. kind of bridge that gap. Now, here comes the kind of the tougher questions. What happens when that partner is not as open to that? You know, we can't say out of lack of care or love for um, their partner, mm -hmm. but you know, you know, I'm just saying it because I know it to be true sometimes, you know, a lot of times people will feel I have a finite amount of time to play golf. I love golf. Mm -hmm. I want to play. Doesn't mean I don't love you. Doesn't mean mm -hmm. I love him, her, but I yep. want to play. And it's just, it creates an impasse. And yep. I can speak from personal witness um, that it, it, it can cause real fissures. I mean, ultimately, I mean, unfortunately, I've had more than a few clients that have ended up in divorce. Yeah. Now, I am not obviously not in the relationships and my guess would be that there were probably I hope it wasn't just golf and there were some additional layers, but it was definitely kind of, you know, a solid punch yeah. that didn't help things. Yeah. And I think it goes right. It goes back to us. Right. So let's say, for example, I have a, I have some young kids. He's gone all the time or she's gone all the time, yeah. whatever the situation, right? Someone's not there. So right. I, I, now I'm thinking I'm doing this by myself. Uh, this isn't what I signed up for, right? So if I can like work through some of that and get to a place of like, well, okay, what do I really want? Like maybe I need some time alone. Maybe I need some help with daycare. Maybe I need, maybe I need something that gets me out of the house. But again, I want to make that clear request. Yeah. So we, we have no control over what the other person says. Yes, right. no, right? right? We can, we can't. Right. Yes, I'll do it. Right. But we can at least make that clear request and we have to know what we're looking for because yeah. there's a pretty big difference. And I want some help with childcare or I need somebody to help me make dinner mm -hmm. versus like, I want intimacy with my partner. But, yeah, I want true. someone to help me with the day to day versus like, I, I actually want to travel with you. I want to be with you. Right. 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 And all of these things are equal value. Mm -hmm. But it has to be, it has to be something that we decide ahead of time and we can be super clear and expressing. Makes sense. So coach Jen, I have, have the tough question. I guess in some of these instances, um, the partner in distress or discontent may have to ask the uncomfortable question, potentially uncomfortable question of why is golf so important to you? What does golf give to you? I mean, you know, again, I'm the first person to say there's nothing like 
being out there in the fresh air and just enjoying the game. But for many people, golf, you know, just like other things, mm -hmm. it's an elixir for some other issues. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's, I just want to get, a, I don't know, you know, I need to get away from you, the house, whatever the case may be. Sure. But if this seems to be an issue. It seems like that would be one of those questions in a, in a candid conversation that two partners would need to discuss. Yeah. So we, we talk about, right, like we can overdo anything, yeah. right? Like we can overdo social media. We can over Netflix. We can over drink. Yeah. We can over golf. We can over shop. We can over everything, mm -hmm. right? So if, if now golfing is over the boundaries that that relationship has set. Now we, we do want to understand why, like what's going on that you, that, that the other person is choosing golf over time with the family consistently over time. Right. We want to understand what's going on mm -hmm. so that we can try to understand where the, where the, the break is because we can't fix what we don't know is broken. Okay. Right. That's right. I also like asking the question, like if you weren't golfing, what would you want to be doing? What would you be doing instead? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I think sometimes a lot of people would actually just fill that space with something else. I agree. Right. I agree. So maybe I don't golf, but now I go bowling. Maybe I don't go bowling. Now I, whatever, do something yeah. else. Like, yeah. I think there are some personalities that just thrive on whatever it is, right? The competition sure. with self or sure. the getting better or whatever it is. Sure. And so I, I would I would ask that. And I would also ask like, what's, what's happening different now versus say like five years ago or 10 years ago, or when you first started getting when you were dating, Oops, that oh, my phone real time there, my phone fell. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Like what's different now? Like, why is it a problem now? And it wasn't a problem before, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? What's changed in our relationship and we can have that conversation. Right. Right. Cause yeah, again, I know that, and I've, again, I'm around a lot of golf and around a lot of golfers, and I've heard this all as well. It could be worse. It's just golf, you know. Yeah, which probably isn't the best thing to say to your partner. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, I'm thinking like, but, oh, right? I'm it's like, yeah, I, yeah. I think there, I think that there's some truth to that of like, if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be doing something else. And how can we value and honor what our partner is asking of us? Because again, I really believe most people do want to be in that relationship. They mm -hmm. do want to have the partnership. Mm -hmm. It's like, how can we have both? How can we get to this place where it feels like I'm getting, uh, I'm able to, to improve my game and we're still creating connection and intimacy and getting things done. Mm -hmm. And I think that is possible, but it requires some vulnerable conversation. And that's right. the hard part. That's the hard part. Yeah. Now here's another doozy for you, coach. Tell me. Oftentimes people, you know, they've, they've, I won't say succumbed, but they've resigned themselves to the fact that their partner is, is an avid golfer. Again, nothing wrong with that per se, but their potential solution to that is to, then jump into golf mm -hmm. thinking that if they're also golfers that that would automatically mean that they will become their their life partners pl playing partner choice yeah and it typically often doesn't work that way and then that leads to a whole nother layer of disappointment yeah well listen i i had my husband try to teach me golf and that was not a good scene in our relationship. I think, I think hiring you is a much better choice. It, you know, it, it works out well. And I'm not just saying that because obviously I'm a golf professional. No, it is. I mean, there, in some instances it works out well, but more often than not, it, not yeah, because it. what we hear our partners telling us is like, you're doing it wrong. You're screwing it up. You're not getting it fast enough, right? Like that's how our brain interprets right. their teaching. Correct. And then if your brain is like mine, I'm like, well, you're not a golf pro. Who do you think you are? Yeah. This seems yeah. fine. Yeah. This feels more comfortable. Yeah. 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 Right. So yeah. it's like they, they're lacking the credibility and we're lacking the confidence a lot of times to allow them to teach us. It becomes a mismatch. So, so I think, right, it goes back to, again, like really being honest with like, what do I want? Like, do I truly want to learn how to golf so that I can understand the sport and we can have some common language? Right. Great. Am I setting expectations on this adventure exactly. that, that require his participation, right? Because here's like one of the number one things with coaching, and I wish it was different than this, but the truth is no matter how hard we try, we cannot make other people do something, that is right? True. We can't so make true. them show up in any kind of way. And 
true. If I was wrong, that's the book I would have written. How how to make people do what I want no it's matter true. what. That's it's the kind true. of coaching I would do. Right. Exactly. Right. I've tried it. I promise my kids, my mm -hmm. husband, none of them do what I think they should do. Like I have tried. <laughs> yes, that's right. We would all be uh, if we'd had had that figured out, we'd be sitting somewhere on a beach or skiing right. our desired slopes or doing something like that. Right. And all the people around us would be doing exactly what we think they should exactly. do. And it, it, it just doesn't work that way. Right? right. So it's like we have to check in. Like, am, am I doing this so that he has a certain reaction or does a certain thing in response to this because chances are i've played this all out in my head like he's gonna be super excited and we're gonna like go to scotland and we're gonna do all these things and yes. we've been cooking this up for who writing knows the how story. long writing the story Absolutely. that's right and then and then it comes out and the, the partner's like oh, wait what no oh no i'm going to scotland with the boys we've been planning this for three years Right. And he has no idea that we've been thinking about this. So again, right, like that open, honest communication, that willingness to be vulnerable. And that feels scary that that opening ourselves up to that person feels scary. So just like honoring and recognizing that. Right. So again, one of the things I'm just trying to make sure that I'm listening carefully here. One of the things we don't want to do is to be inauthentic, to not be true to ourselves. If this is not something that you're truly interested in. Right. Don't go there. Right. Yeah. So, okay. Th this might feel like a, a, a strange leap, but no. stay with me for a second. Okay. Right. So not only do we want to be authentic to ourselves, but like we also fell in love with this person mm -hmm. because of like who they are. Yeah. And if golfing or hunting or whatever is part of who they are, we also have to be able to allow them to do that thing. Right. Okay. Again, within the boundaries that we've set within the relationship, right. within what we've agreed to right. works for our stage and phase in life. Yes. But it's like we don't want someone to do something just because like just because they're looking for a response from us. Right. And the example I think of is like with sex, mm -hmm. like I don't want to I don't want to just do it just because mm -hmm. I think it'll make him happy. Like we want to both enjoy it. We right. want to both get something out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we're both working from this place of like, well, she'll, she probably wants me to do this or maybe if I do this, he'll respond in that way. It just doesn't work. We right. want to have like respect and healthy boundaries and just being super right. honest about what it is we're looking for. Sure. sure. So let that person be and um, and everyone's going to grow and evolve. Perhaps they weren't a golfer when at the time you got together or got married or something like that, but everyone evolves and grows and we have to kind of respect, create boundaries, healthy boundaries, respect them and go from there. It's interesting. I do have um, a client and, and I thought just on the flip side of this, um, she came to golf because um, she said, it's got to be, he, I know him so well, but he's falling in love with this thing. It must be something really cool about it, which I thought yeah. was a really great way. She's going like, I know him. I trust him. It, it's got to be something here. And of course, it's funny because she plays more golf than he does now. And so that, yeah. that's a lot of golf. But one of the things that I love that she said is that I realized when I let go and let him play, enjoy whatever, you know, his weekend round with his guys on Saturday, Sunday, whatever the case may, mm -hmm. whatever the case is, he is a much better version of himself. He's had an opportunity to enjoy, decompress, do whatever they do out there on the fairways as, you know, the guy's having fun and he comes home, he's a much better husband and better dad and just, you know, he's a happy guy. And yeah. I thought, great insight. Yeah. And like, oh, as it turns out, I'm like a better mom, better wife, better person when I also get to play. And it, and you didn't say that they were actually golfing together, which is kind of fun. No, they, they, they play together, but not on, on occasion. And so they kind of split their weekends, you know, um, with, with the kids. So you obviously, you know, for someone to just be able to go enjoy around with their friends and maybe, you know, have the 19th hole, as we like to call it. So one gets Saturday, one gets Sunday. Mm -hmm. And, you yeah. know, yeah. And it works yeah. out well. Yeah, I love that. Right. And her mindset was like, I just want to check this out. No expectation that she was now tagging along on trips or right. they were going right. to, you know, this was going to be their like new hobby. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's just coming from a more, like a more pure place, more yes. curiosity. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. 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 So we mentioned the word boundaries. So can we mm -hmm. talk about that for a sure, second? Please do. So I think a lot of times when people hear the word boundaries, it sounds like, oh, 
well, if you keep golfing on Saturdays, then I, then, then that's wrong. Or you need to stop golfing on Saturdays. And if you don't stop golfing on Saturdays, then it's like some kind of punishment or something mm -hmm. negative is going yeah. to happen. Mm -hmm. And we just want to be really careful that boundaries don't come with threats. Boundaries don't come with, mm -hmm. um, like accusations or like things that we can't enforce, you know, like if you've ever told the kids, like, we're going to cancel Christmas, <laughs> like <laughs> that's One not a great time. out. It's a wrap. Yeah. Right. Like that's not a great boundary or like you're never golfing again. Right, like right. not a great boundary. We can't right. enforce it. We can't really like do anything about it. So a boundary always comes down to like what we do. Like if you want to golf every Saturday, then I'm going to get a membership to the pool and take the kids to the pool on Saturdays. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So it's like how I'm going to react, what I'm going to do versus threatening mm -hmm. or set, putting something out there that I just can't enforce. It always comes back to what I am willing to do. Mm -hmm. And again, that comes from like being super clear with myself mm -hmm. and what am I willing to do? What feels okay for me? That makes great sense. And that's, you know, it's one of the things, this is probably tangential, but actually not. Um, I was just reading a, a rather extensive article about how many golf clubs are expanding. Of course, we know they're doing it for some revenue driven reasons, but I think one of the, maybe perhaps unintended or, you know, I'll say unintended outcomes with that. Um, it's kind of allowing people to not have to make those kind of threats and decisions because long of the short, what they're doing is they know that it's important to expand beyond just the golf. You know, lots of country clubs have had it all, you know, golf, tennis, swim, mm -hmm. everything in between. But a lot of clubs were just golf clubs. And yeah. so they realized that it's easier for um, a golfer of the family or the family to make the decision to enjoy a membership if it has a little something for everyone. So yeah. just in that instance, they don't have to choose. Well, OK, since you're going to be out Saturday at the club playing golf, the kids and I are going to be there having lunch and hanging out at the pool. Right. Great. Yeah, exactly. And I think, right, there is a financial implication to talk about too, yeah, right? Because I think some resentment can bubble up if it's like, he he's spending all of our vacation money or he gets to do what he wants and I don't get to do anything. And again, we just want to like check ourselves and what, what do I want? Like, do I want to go on a girl's weekend? Do, is there a hobby I want to do? Is there some help around the house that I want? Is there a job that I want to take. And it feels like that's going to be difficult because of his schedule. Like what exactly is it that I want? Mm -hmm. And to bring that forward from a place of like confidence and clarity yes. versus it's not fair. I don't ever get to do this. And I want to, you know, like kind of like that naggy graspy energy. It's totally yeah. different. Would victim be a bad word there? No, no, I think you're right. I think that is the right word. Yeah. Being a, being a partner and acting as such, just kind of, you know, just taking the behavior, if you will, and not not being upfront about how it makes you feel, and yeah. and it's it's uh, effects on the household because you, that was you know was kind of one of the things on my little list here, uh, Coach Jen, is that you know the reality is in some for in some instances, yeah, it's not that it's they're going to lose the house, but you know they're going like I had it's particularly if someone is. You know, and I use it in the classical sense of the word, the pure sense of the word. If they're ignorant of the of the pure costs of golf, you know, they just happen to take a look at the American Express statement or something. They're going, right. are you kidding me? This is what's going on every week, every month. And I asked for, you know, a weekend at the mountains and you said, no, we couldn't afford it. What? Whoa. Whoa. Right. Whoa. Yeah. Right. Right. That, it's like that. I had no idea. And again, right. And it, it's like having that conversation, like I let's be partners on this. Let's look at it together. And, and I want to throw out the caveat, right? Like I, I, re, I recognize and I realize this can be difficult work for relationships that haven't had this. Sure. It sure. doesn't mean that it's impossible. It doesn't mean we can't get there, but it is going to be baby steps. So mm -hmm. having a coach, having a therapist, having someone to help you work through that right. can be really, really powerful. Right. And at the end of the day, our goal is to be able to show up as our best selves, as our most authentic selves, right. allow our partners to do the same. And from that place, now we can evaluate, like, is this relationship working? Is this where we still want to be? 
when we're in graspy energy or when we're not communicating, that is not a good spot to make right. a decision from, right. Right. right? right? That's where like so much regret happens. So we just want to make sure that both par partners are feeling super empowered mm -hmm. and then we can decide. And it's just a totally different energy and a totally different experience. Sure, it can work out. It can, it can be a win-win for everyone. It doesn't have to be, um, a, you know, losing proposition for one of the uh, parties involved. Right. Right. And I think rem like, that's such a good point, right? And remembering like it's stages and phases, what we decide works for our family right now might look different in a year or two Absolutely. years or five years. Absolutely. Like I'm going to test out a golf term here, but like, let's play the long game. I love it. That's right. right. That's let's right. That's right. Game and like be committed to each other knowing because the partner who's playing the golf also needs to like be able to be re like, be able to rein himself in or herself in and think about what do I really want? Because yeah. they probably do want connection with family. They probably do want connection with partner. Right. So how do we get that too? How do we help them to, right. to articulate what they right. want? Maybe they do want the spouse on the trip. I don't yeah. know. Maybe yeah. they don't. You know, it's interesting that oftentimes, and I cannot count, honestly, I'd have to go through and look at my entire um, historical client list to see um, how many ladies begin golf or in the early stages of in loving golf and then they're um then the family comes along and then if you look at kind of the bell curve of the ages of of, of my uh, adult female clients then there's usually this huge gap because then it's about the time the kids are in late high school to college that the moms feel that they have an opportunity to come back to golf Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. So many of them say, well, we started off playing together, but now he's been playing for 20 years and I'm yeah. here, you know, taking golf 101 again, even mm -hmm. though I took it back in 1994. Right. And, um, you know, sometimes at that point, you know, they're like, yeah, it's fine. Great. The kids are off to college and life is good. But, you know, some of them do speak like, how did, how, how did this happen? I hope I, you know, was I stupid enough to just kind of let, let my wants at least in this small part, mm -hmm. kind of slip away. And of course, you know, that can be kind of a, you know, a, a, a microcosm of a, of a lot of things, mm -hmm. but, you know, for that, that person who we may be, you know, still in that phase where, you know, the family is growing or they're undergoing some, some kind of seismic shifts mm -hmm. and one person seems to be, I won't say less affected, but their, their flow of, of leisure doesn't, doesn't seem to have to change as much. Mm hmm yeah, I think that's a good point. And that's, you know, in, in, in some relationships, that is what happens, especially if one person isn't speaking up to say, hey, we'd love to actually see you at home. And it, with something like golf, right, you're getting that dopamine hit, you're getting that like feel good yeah. chemical. And when you're sleep deprived, and you have kids and problems like that feels yeah. really good. Mm -hmm. And if there's no one there to say like, hey, there's this thing over here, we might miss it. Right. Right. And, and so it's like, again, it's like that coming together, just constantly helping people practice that coming together, take the long view and find that place where we're both getting our needs met. And, and it's not specific to golf right. by any means, but um, right. Like in that context of just recognizing like, what, what do I really want? And so sometimes I'll ask clients to think about like in five years, 10 years, 15 years, mm -hmm. Like, what does the relationship look like? What does my relationship with my partner look like? My, my kids and golf. Mm, what does that look like? Because you can have relationships with all of these things. We're just going to balance it out over time. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the beautiful thing about golf is that it is the one sport that spans the generations. Mm -hmm. on, on a basketball court or a tennis court, you're less likely to see, you know, three to four generations of the family represented it represented in one group and mm -hmm. in golf it's just that you know can mm -hmm. be the three-year-old you know the great-grandchild the grandchild the child and and the, and the great-grand all mm -hmm. in one playing together having a great time yeah. and it's been the ebb and flow you know there was a time when someone wasn't playing at all someone was playing a little bit someone was playing a lot and it just goes on and on yeah. but we just kind of have to know to navigate that right I love that shift so much right like think about if I'm a golfer and I'm thinking like this is, this is for the fun. This is for the bringing of my people together. This is for the enjoyment of the game. Like, what is that shift for me? Right. If I, if I'm like, if I put it into that perspective, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. right. If I ask myself, like, does, 
how do I accomplish that? What are the steps I need to take so that I create this like legacy of golf Mm -hmm. versus making it just about me and my golf game? Correct. Correct. And that can mean, you know, maybe, you know, shifting, shifting, breaking it up, doing some things, but there, there's a way to do it to make golf, you know, one part of a great, you know, phenomenal life experience for the entire family Mm -hmm. and, and beyond. Right. Mm -hmm. This has been amazing. Yeah, so fun. Now, if you need help with golf, you know, you come see me, folks, Dr. Greta. But if this conversation of golf, if again, I'm using the term widowism or anything related to that, I'm going to give you, I want you to tell uh, Coach Jen, I want you to brag on yourself. Let, yeah. let, let the folks know what you do all the time, what you're about and how they can reach you. And we're going to put that down in the description too, folks. So don't worry, you don't have to write it down, but I wanted to hear from you. Absolutely. Thank you. So you can find me online at Jen Fry, F-R-E-Y coaching.com. You can find me on Instagram and that is where I post the majority of my infidelity content. So um, that's kind of how Greta and I connected is under this idea of elf widow cheating on the partner. So infidelity is, is my jam. Um, I love talking to people about how they can find that reconnection. So find me on Instagram at jen.fry.coaching. Um, so I'd love to see you like my page, follow me. You'll get some great tips, but they won't be for golf. That was a loaded statement. We could end up with a whole other episode with this golf and infidelity, but we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> I'll post on your Instagram and we'll get that conversation going. But Coach right. Jen, I want to say thank you so much for being here. This is an amazing conversation because we know that golf in many ways is a metaphor for life in so many ways, but it can be one of the best parts of life. So I want everyone to get ready for a great lifetime of golf. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. We'll see you all next time.